Hello and welcome to Shark Jets, I'm Skid Viz. In this video, I have a question for you. If you were gonna build a house, would you go out into the forest and make a hammer out of some rocks and then chop down some trees and then build a house? Or would you just go to the hardware store and just pick out what you need to build the house? Probably the latter, right? Being a game developer, especially a solo game developer, uh, requires that you use tools to make your life easier because you have less people working on a project and it's going to take you longer to get it to market. So you want to utilize as many tools as possible so that you can get your dream out there as quick as possible. So that's why in this episode, we're going to switch over to using the VR interaction framework, which is this really cool framework, which basically, uh, simplifies using the inputs and locomotion and all that stuff and creates kind of a standardized version of things so that you can get your game shipped and out the door as quick as possible. So without any further ado, please make sure to like and subscribe so I can keep making videos and let's get started. Okay, here we are picking up where we left off. So if you're not caught up, please go back and watch the other videos. The first thing we want to do is, of course, go ahead and buy the VR Interaction Framework, which you can get from the Unity Asset Store. The link is in the description. It's currently on sale, so that's good. And then once we have that purchased, we'll go into our Package Manager. And then we'll want to make sure we're looking at our assets, or so my assets. So once that's selected, it will show you everything you have in the Asset Store. So we'll go ahead and just do a search for Framework. and we'll find the VR interaction framework. So we'll go ahead and do an import and it will give you a little warning saying that importing a complete project will overwrite your current settings. So we'll do an import right here, but this next one that comes up says it has dependencies. We don't want to install and upgrade those. We'd rather just skip those. And then we're presented with all the files in this package. We'll collapse everything down to its root here and you'll see we have two main folders here. We want to get rid of this project settings because it'll overwrite anything we already have, but we'll keep the first one, the BNG framework selected and hit import. Okay, so we can close that up now. And when we installed the XR Interaction Toolkit, it switched over to the new input methods, which we covered in the last video. So we'll go into project settings, player, and then down here, there's a section for the active input handling. And it should have switched you to the new input system, um, but we're gonna change that over to both because the XR, the VRIF system uses, currently uses the, uh, the old input method. So we wanna be able to use both. So we'll go ahead and apply this and it'll reboot the system for us. Okay, now that that's done, we can close this and get to work. So the first thing we want to do is add something to our XR rig. Um, there's a new thing called an input bridge. So we'll add that. And what this is basically doing is there's different uh, systems you can use for your inputs. Um, and there's the, uh, the XR input toolkit that we're using. There's the OVR, which is the Oculus integration system. Um, and then there's Steam VR and Pico. Um, so if you want to be able to support more systems, um, it's better to have this as a bridge because it covers most of them. Um, so we'll make sure that's set to XR input. And then just like we did in our previous uh, video, we, we had a little check mark to determine whether or not we were pulling the trigger. Um, that's all this is here. It lets us get feedback from all of our devices and buttons and stuff like that to make sure that we can track if something's being pressed. So we're good there. Uh, the next thing we wanna do is go ahead and go into our right hand and we'll disable the old cube because we're not gonna use that anymore. And we'll go into the right hand controller and we're gonna add a hand controller. There you go. We don't need to change anything here. It's gonna, it's gonna handle everything for us, but it needs to have this so that it can actually do the animations for our hand. So once we have that set up, we can go ahead and add the actual hand model. 
So we can come into our search here in the project and they have a nice little hand model for us. So we can type in hands and you'll see this hands are gloves mat 06. We can select that and drag that into the right hand controller. Great. And uh, we want to rotate it because right now it's kind of facing not how we normally would rest our hand on the controller. So we want to make some rotations here. So we'll go to the rotation. We'll go at negative 12x, uh, 13y, and negative 90z. And that'll put us more how we normally use the controllers. Clear this message here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is set the animation controller because they it comes with uh, the skeletal system for uh, animating the hands. So we'll go ahead and click here. And we've got a, a few, several different ones here. We want to click the right hand animator. And that'll give us the animation we need. And then uh, the next thing we want to do is add an empty object inside the right hand controller. And we will call this object grabber. And this item will be responsible for all of our grabbing actions. So we want to add a component to that called grabber as well. Then the grabber script just wants to know which hand this is on. So it's currently set to the left hand, but we're on the right hand. So we'll change that to right. And we are good to go there. And now we can actually duplicate this hand and this grabber, control D and drag those into the left hand. We'll go ahead and disable that cube as well. And then for the hand model, it's facing the wrong way. So we want to change the Y to negative one. And as you can see, that sets that hand to be in the opposite direction. Last but not least, we want to get our collision working. So on our grabber, we're going to go ahead and add a sphere collider. And we'll set it to is trigger. And we right now it's super big. So we want to go ahead and switch that down to like 0 0.02. And now it's really tiny. So you can adjust that however you want, but this will work for us. And then we also want to add a rigid body like we've done before to get that door working. Set it to not use gravity. And then lastly, we want to change the tag and set that back to key like we had before. And this will get our code working. So if everything's done right, we should be able to test this out and see that it all works. Okay, I did miss one step. I added the hand controller to the right hand as we did before, but I did not add one to the left hand. So I'll go ahead and just go in there and add a hand controller. And now this should all work. Um, I think I forgot to also set the grabber to be the left hand on the left hand. So let's go ahead and change that go into the left hand controller, set the grabber and change that to left. All right, now this should all work. Okay, so here we are. Um, our hands are working, left hand, right hand work, button presses. And uh, let's see if our door opens up. There it is. And there you have it, quick and easy as usual. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or want to know how to do anything, leave me a comment and I will try to fit it into the schedule. Thanks again for watching. I'm still Skidvis. Peace out.